Let's look at the example of the Atwood's machine using the Euler-Lagrange equation. Of course, you can solve for the dynamics of this machine uh, in the Newtonian framework, but this is a nice simple example. We have a strong intuition developed from the Newtonian framework, uh, and we can use the Euler-Lagrange equation to generate a totally equivalent solution. So here's our Atwood machine. Uh, the pulley in the Atwood machine has a radius r. We're going to think about uh, two different masses, mass 1 and mass 2. We're going to measure their vertical positions from the center of the pulley. The position of mass 1 will be x1, position of mass 2 will be x2. Now, of course, they're connected by a chain or a, a rope. And so uh, the sum of x1 and x2 plus a little bit of, of rope that hangs over the top of the pulley that has to be equal to some constant uh, L, which is the length of the rope. And so that tells us that x1 is equal to minus x2 plus some constant, which turns out not to be important since it doesn't affect the dynamics of the problem. Moreover, uh, velocity for the first mass, x1 dot, is going to be equal and opposite to the velocity of the second mass, x2 dot. So now this allows us to write the kinetic and potential energies of both masses, which is what we need in order to apply the Euler-Lagrange equation uh, in Lagrangian mechanics. So of course the kinetic energy uh, is the sum of kinetic energies for each of the masses. So we've got one half m1 x1 dot squared, one half m2 x2 dot squared. Uh, we will ignore the motion of the pulley, or at least its contribution to the energies in the system, so we don't have to worry about its rotational kinetic energy. The next thing we need to do is write the uh, potential energies for each of the two masses. So of course we've got mgh, h being the height above some reference surface. Now remember, because we're measuring the positions of the, of the two masses uh, as being positive in the downward direction, we can write uh, that height h above some reference surface for each mass is in this way. So m1 g h naught. So h naught say is the height of the axis of the pulley, and then the height of mass one will be h naught minus its position x1. Uh, so as the pulley goes down and x1 increases, its kinetic energy, excuse me, its potential energy will, will decrease. We have a very similar expression here for the second mass. And of course, these h naughts they basically just contribute a constant to the potential energy function, as shown here. And since we're going to all, only be interested in changes in the kinetic energy, we can ignore that constant and then just write the potential energy for the system in this way. So then when we write our Lagrangian, remember it's the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So here's our kinetic energy, some of the kinetic energies for each masses, each of the masses, and then here are our potential energies. Now remember, we're doing minus the, the potential energy, and so those minus signs on the potential energy, they become pluses now. Recall, of course, that x1 is just equal to x2 minus x2 plus some constant. Well, we'll just call all of that x and ignore the constant. And so now we're going to make the replacement. We're going to replace our velocities using this relationship here. Um, and change our uh, potential energies, and so you get a final expression for the Lagrangian in terms of x. Here's the kinetic energy, and now we're just adding up the masses here in this parentheses. Here's our potential energy, and now we're taking a difference between the masses because x1 and x2 are, are different by a, uh, a minus sign. So we're writing a Lagrangian up here. Remember that in order to apply the Euler-Lagrange equation, we need to take some x derivatives on one side, and those will be set equal to the time derivative of some x dot derivatives. Now, we only have one coordinate describing all the motion uh, for the system, so this is actually a one-dimensional system, so that makes it particularly easy to apply the Euler-Lagrange equation. Okay, so the x derivative, the only explicit x dependence I see for the Lagrangian, is through the potential energy term. And so the left-hand side of our Euler-Lagrange equation looks like this. That's just the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, the right-hand side, we have a time derivative of the x dot derivative of the Lagrangian. Well, the only x dot dependence I see is right here in the kinetic energy. And so we need to take a time derivative of everything in here. Of course, the only thing that depends on time is x dot, and so we get this. And so what that tells us is that uh, the relative gravitational acceleration 
going to be equal to this. In other words, the net acceleration uh, for one mass, which is the same as minus the net acceleration for the other mass, is just equal to the difference in masses divided through by the sum of masses times the gravitational acceleration, which is the standard solution for an Atwood machine, which you would get if you used Newton's equations. But again, we didn't have to take account of vectors or other forces that can complicate the Newtonian approach. The Lagrangian approach just requires us to write down energies and then take derivatives.